Few people had ever heard of Poroti Springs before the Māori Council decided to take on the government over water rights. Now the springs and the people fighting to claim them are being held up as an example of why the issue has to be sorted out. But what do the people of Poroti Springs think? This morning we're going live to Poroti near Whangare to talk to Taipari Munro and Lorraine Norris about their claim and their reaction to the Waitangi Tribunal's finding. But first, joining us in the studio is the Deputy Chair of the New Zealand Māori Council, Rahui Kātene. Atamari, tēnā koe, Rahui. Atamari. Now, what does the Tribunal's report mean to you? Oh, look, we're totally delighted with it. It's a vindication of all the hard work that so many people have put into it. And it's also a vindication of the many years of Māori going to the Māori uh, Land Court, to the Waitangi Tribunal, to, to the uh, Resource Management Act, everything that we can do to try and make sure that our waterways are protected. Mm. So here we are, we've got a report finally that says, yes, Māori do have proprietary interests in water, water resources, and the government needs to take um, to protect those. Mm. OK, so let's go up to Porotui Springs now. Taipari, what's your reaction to the tribunal's findings? Hi, tēnā koe, Scotty. Um, the people of Porotui are very delighted with the, um, with the recommendation that has come out from the tribunal, uh, because this can mean, you know, that at last uh, that we can, uh, that the Poroti, people of Poroti will have recognition in terms of the, re the relationship and the connection that they have to the, um, to the springs of Poroti. Mm. Lorraine, you were in the environment court yesterday still battling for your springs. Does the, how does the findings affect uh, the process through the tribunal and through the, uh, the environment court? Oh, tēnā koe, Scotty. Well, it was a very, uh, for myself, it was a very mātewa um, opportune time because I spoke after the tribunal um, decision had actually been delivered. So it gave me much great pleasure to say to the commissioner um, who was hearing our case, the commissioner for the environment, um, that the tribunal had come out in recognition of propriety rights and that the government must tie hoa on the asset sale and allow for uh, discussions to take place that will determine the future of um, its decision. So I was, that gave me much pleasure on Friday to be able to say that to the Commissioner mm. before I got to um, have my say about the particular tucky that was on the floor, which once again was um, us, uh, the, the, the home people here, the Tangata Whenua here at Poroti, um, opposing the granting by Northern Regional Council a application by Zodiac Water Company to take more water from their agreed ta uh, takes. So in actual fact, this, this, this company, they already have a 35-year consent, which we opposed. They now want to take more water than the amount for which their consent was granted. Mm. And so... It, it, I, I, this is very, very um, appropriate timing, as Scotty. And what, what kind of impact will the tribunal's report have on the decisions that are being made in the Environment Court at the moment? Will it have much impact on that? Well, we are hopeful it, it will, because one of the things I said to the Commissioner on Friday was, you know, we have been fighting this fight for over, nearly 30 years now with regards to... Um, propriety rights, as it's now being termed, but with, this is about the the taonga of water, mm. which is protected under the Treaty of Waitangi, and where is the recognition of that protection of the partnership and recognition of the rights of Tonga to Whenua to their taonga, to their resources. Taipari, I think that we all need... Carry on, Lorraine. Carry on. I think we all need to listen to the advice that was given on, on Friday. We must all proceed and start to talk, and that's got to include the regional councils, talking with hapu. Mm. Taipari, I just want to finish with you now. In practical terms, what do you want in, term, in terms of your claim on uh, Porotui Springs? In practical terms, what are you seeking? Fundamentally, we want to be able to sit at the decision-making table because that's a, a space that we haven't been um, included in uh, uh, up to this point. 
So, you know, where the decisions are made around our water, we want, be, we want to be sitting at that decision-making table and we want to be included in the discussion and included in the decision-making. And uh, we see that as being in fulfilment of the, our, our old people's responsibility that they had uh, left to us in, in terms of the kaitiakitanga and the guardianship of the springs for the benefit of the uh, people for whom the springs had been set aside. So uh, that, that's fundamentally what we're wanting, Scotty, is to be able to sit at the table and to be included in the discussions that take place there and the decision-making that happens. Mm. Taipari, Lorraine, thank you very much for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. And kapai a kōrua whakamārama. Tēnā kōrua. Ai, tēnā koe. Tēnā koe. OK, let's come back to you now, Rawi, and here's your big chance. I mean, we've had the, uh, the property rights uh, over water and the, the decision that government must delay asset sales being made by the Waitangi Tribunal just this last week. John Key's already said that he doesn't have to listen to the recommendations of the Waitangi Tribunal. What would you say to John Key now? What's your advice to John Key? I think he has to be very careful because the government, had the, the tribunal said in the report that if they were to go ahead with the sales, that would be a breach of the treaty. They are on record now as saying that they are um, prepared to act in good faith. If they walk away from that decision and go ahead with the sales, then they are showing that they are not acting in good faith. And what we need is a treaty partner that is always going to act in good faith and is going to sit down and talk with us. Mm. That's all we want at this stage, is to be able to talk with them and to come to some sort of framework that will suit all of us. And if that doesn't eventuate, how far are you prepared to go? How far will the Māori Council go? Look, there are heaps of options that we've got. Uh, what we don't want to see is another foreshore and seabed situation. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we do always have the um, option of being able to go to court and with the tribunal report in our back pocket, that's going to be so much stronger. Mm. In terms of claims over waterways, how many claims are we talking about? Because there is a bit of a misconception out there that Māori are claiming it's a blanket claim over all water right across the country. How many claims That's are we right. talking there's, about? There's a huge misconception about the claim. And what we have are 11 claimants um, to, that are talking about their particular pieces of the waterways. Uh, and then we've got about a 101, I think, and in other interested parties. So it's not a blanket claim. It is very specific. But it does mean that the government is going to have to sit down with each and every one of those claimants and those interested parties and deal with each and every one of us. Yeah. So, you know, we can do that um, properly. The, the tribunal has said the Crown should be calling um, a hui now for the um, nation, for council, for the iwi leaders and for all interested parties so that we can sit down and do that and we're ready to do that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, the wider community, what's been the reaction? Aren't we doing um, the wider community a favour here? Because uh, according to some of the research that's been done, over 80% of the country disagree with asset sales. And now the tribunal is saying delay the asset sales until Māori water rights are dealt with. Aren't we doing the wider community a bit of a favour? Well, it's funny because on Talkback and other places, you, you're getting this perception that Māori are greedy and that we're just jumping in on the bandwagon. And in fact, uh, we've been doing this for so many years. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the report itself uh, talks about the my pere mm, um, situation. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So for many years we've been trying to uh, get the government to talk to us about these issues. Um, of course it, there was no sale of assets that came up until mm. now. But you know we do need to actually move ahead with uh, to these dis negotiations. And the fact that um, we are in line with mm. what 80% of the country wants mm. is great. Let's work together. And what do you say to people who make the accusation that Māori are holding the country to ransom over shares and asset sales or you know, do these claims that they want royalty payments? What do you say to people like that? There is a whole lot of things that we need to look at and you know, shares, royalties, whatever, that's only part of it. We really do need to sit down with the government and do it properly. And for those people that think that we're holding up progress, well, look, we have been very balanced over so many decades. Yeah. We're quite happy to act as uh, a good neighbour to everybody else. But we do expect the same in, in return. We believe that these are property rights. Yeah. And as property rights, they should be protected just as much as anybody else's property rights are. So you as a householder know what your property rights are, that you can uh, sell, that you can rent, that you can do anything that you want to in your home. We want to be able to have the same right over our property.